three witches await Macbeth on a lonely moor. One tells him he'll be king. Ah, what's it like to see greatness on the horizon? William Shakespeare's play is a tragedy about greatness and uncontrolled ambition. It is also a murder story, full of suspense and excitement. And it is a work of poetry, for the language is rich in sound and meaning. You're about to see two very different versions of the witches scene from Act One. The first is a 1948 film adaptation directed by Orson Welles, a larger than life figure in the history of cinema and theater, who also plays Macbeth. Wells takes liberties with Shakespeare's play. His opening scene, for example, combines scenes one and three of act one, melding them together into a new beginning. He rearranges other scenes, introduces lines from other plays, and even creates a new minor character. Wells' choice of setting, The Foggy Moors of Scotland, is true to the text. But he gives that setting a surreal atmosphere through his use of Hollywood sets. And note the camera angles. As one critic commented, Wells' genius lies in his ability to point a camera at a subject in odd but thoroughly significant ways. So, let the witch's magic and mischief pull you in and watch Macbeth, troubled, flattered, and in moral conflict with himself. of the earth and yet are armed. Speak if you can, what are you? Hail, what is to do? Hail, hail, hail to thee, thin of Cordor. All hail, Macbeth, thou shalt be king hereafter. If you can look into the seeds of time and say which grain will grow and which will not, Speak then to me, who neither beg nor fear your favors nor your hate. Hail! 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 Lesser than Macbeth and greater, not so happy, yet much happier. Thou shalt get king, though thou be not. So Go, Hithron, live. Stay, you imperfect speakers. Tell me more. I am the Thane of Glance, but how of Cordor? The Thane of Cordor lives, a prosperous gentleman. And to be king stands not within the prospect of belief, no more than to be Cordor. My Lord Macbeth. Kind gentlemen, the king hath happily received Macbeth the news of thy success. As thick as hail came post with post, and every one did bear thy praises in his kingdom's great defense. We give thee from our royal master thanks. 
He bade us from him called the Thane of Cawdor. What can the devil speak through? In which edition? Hail, most worthy Thane, for it is thine. The Thane of Cawdor lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Who was the Thane lives yet, but under heavy judgment bears that life which he deserves to lose. Treason's capital, confessed and proved, have overthrown him. Gloves and Thane of Cawdor. The greatest is behind. This supernatural soliciting cannot be ill, cannot be good. If Phil, why hath it given me an earnest of success? Commencing in a truth. I am Thane of Cawdor. Good. Why do I yield to that suggestion whose horrid image doth unfix my hair and make my seated heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature? Worthy Macbeth, we stay upon your leisure. Give me your favor. My dull brain was wrought with things forgotten. He shall spurn fate. Scorn death and bear his hopes of wisdom, grace and fear. Let us toward the king. Wells's Macbeth is a study in inner conflict. But could the character have been played another way? Let's watch a different interpretation. Consider whether this Macbeth brings to mind, as one reviewer put it, some modern dictator. Noted Shakespearean actor Ian McKellen plays the part for England's renowned Royal Shakespeare Company. First created for the stage in 1976, this production was videotaped for television in 1979. In one sense, this version seems very traditional. The text of Shakespeare's play has not been altered, and it's performed on stage. Notice how spare the set is, and how the costumes seem to belong to different eras. Compare the experience of viewing this staged play with the experience of viewing Wells's film. Setting, witches, and Macbeth himself. How different can an interpretation be? Let's watch. So foul and fair a day I have not seen. How far is it called, the forest? these so withered and so wild in their attire that look not like the inhabitants of the earth and yet are not live you or are you aught that man may question you seem to understand me by each at once her choppy finger laying upon her skinny lips you should be women and yet your beards forbid me to interpret that you are so speak if you can what are you all hail Macbeth. hail to thee then of glams all hail Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Cawdor. All hail, Macbeth, that shalt be king hereafter. Good sir, why do you start and seem to fear things that do sound so fair? In the name of truth, are you fantastical, or that indeed which outwardly you show? My noble partner you greet with present grace, and great prediction of noble having and of royal hope that he seems wrapped with all. To me, you speak not. If you can look into the seeds of time and say which grain will grow and which will not, speak then to me, who neither beg nor fear your favors nor your hate. Hail, hail, hail. Lesser than Macbeth, and greater. Not so happy yet, much happier. Thou shalt get kings, though thou be none. 
It's all hail, Macbeth and Banquo. Banquo and Macbeth? All hail. Stay, you imperfect speakers. Tell me more about my father's death. I know I'm the Thane of Glams, but how of Cordor... The Thane of Cordor lives a prosperous gentleman, and to be king stands not within the prospect of belief, no more than to be Cordor. Say from whence you have this strange intelligence, and why upon this blasted heath you stop our way with such prophetic greeting. Speak! I charge you! The earth hath bubbles as the water has, and these are of them. Whither are they vanished? Into the air, and what seemed corporal melted as breath into the wind. Would that stay? Were such things here as we do speak about, or have we eaten on the insane route that takes the reason prisoner? Your children shall be kings. You shall be king. And Thane of Cordor, too. Weren't it not, sir? To the self-same tune and words. Who's here? The king hath happily received, Macbeth, the news of thy success. <laughs> we are sent to give thee from our royal master. Thanks. <laughs> and for an earnest of a greater honour, he bade me from him call thee Thane of Cordor, in which addition hail most worthy Thane, for it is thine. What? Can the devil speak true? The Thane of Cordor lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Who was the Thane lives yet, but under heavy judgment bears that life which he deserves to lose. Whether he was combined with those of Norway, or did line the rebel with hidden help and vantage, or that with both, he laboured in his country's rack, I know not. But treason's capital confessed and proved have overthrown him. Glams and Thane of Cordo, the greatest is behind. Thanks for your pains. Do you not hope your children shall be kings, when those that gave the Thane of Corda to me promised no less to them? That trusted home might yet enkindle you into the crown besides the Thane of Corda. <laughs> but tis strange, and oftentimes to win us to our harm, the instruments of darkness tell us truths, win us with honest trifles to betray us in deepest consequence. Cousins, a word, I pray. Two truths are told as happy prologues to the swelling act of the imperial theme. I thank you, gentlemen. This supernatural soliciting cannot be ill, cannot be good. If ill, why has it given me earnest of success? Commencing in a truth. I am Thane of Cordor. If good, why do I yield to that suggestion whose horrid image doth unfix my hair and make my seated heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature? Present fears are less than horrible imaginings. My thought, whose murder yet is but fantastical, shakes so my single state of man that function is smothered in surmise. And nothing is but what is not. Look how our partner's wrapped. If chance will have me king, why chance may crown me without my stir. New honours come upon him like our strange garments, cleave not to their mould, but with the aid of use. Come what? Come may. Time and the hour runs through the roughest today. Well, then, Macbeth, we stay upon your leisure. Give me your favour. My dull brain was wrought with things forgotten. Kind gentlemen, your pains are registered where every day I turn the leaf to read them. Let's talk the king. Think upon what hath chanced. At more time, the interim having waited, let us speak our free hearts, each to other. Very gladly. Till then, enough. Come, friend. 